So. This conference will now be recorded. All right. So uh, you were talking about how it's not cutting through at uh, 10, 10 millimeters per second or nine or eight or five, but it will when you go above that. It's and that. The, the reason is, is uh, if you'll notice, the, your minimum power is probably set to zero or at a lower amount than what the max That's power what is. You. The max is 100, but the minimum is a one. Right, it needs to be a hundred. Well, well, so okay. When you're using the test, it's using the power scale feature. But here, what I was going to explain first, let me back up again, is okay. there are some hard coded rules in the Ruida controller, you know, that are from the factory. That's just how it's designed, and right. it uses a minimum and a maximum power, and it does something different for fill than it does for for line. So we're talking specifically about line here. Um, right. If you if the head travels at 10 millimeters per second or slower, it's going to use the minimum power value. And the reason is, uh, think about if you're cutting out a square, uh, if you got it at 100 percent power, which I, we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, and it starts to slow down to make that direction change around that corner, uh, it has to slow down. It can't make that corner at you know, uh, if you have it set, say, for 100 millimeters per second or whatever the value is, it, it has to slow down and make changes in direction and around fine, intricate details and small work. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and the motion planning, that that's all that, those rules. You can't change them. That's built into the into the DSP. Um, so what happens is Lightburn uses the power scale feature. And to use the power scale feature, you can assign one layer. Uh, you know, a speed, and then you can go into shape properties and you can set each one of those objects in that layer to a different percentage of power. And that percentage of power is the range between the max power and the min power. Can you do a demonstration on the screen and show us what you're talking about? Um, um, yeah, I think I can. Let me, let me just pull that file up. Oh, I forgot I was still showing that. I was going to turn it off after we got talking. I forgot. It'll take Lightburn just a minute to pop up here. Oh, something while I'm thinking about it. You remember, uh, some of you might know I made an article about the 120 degree uh, camera because the presets, uh, only the 110 presets were in here. Um, now, the, um, let me pick the right one. And, yep. Yeah. The 120 degree preset is in there now for the Nova 51 and Nova 63 cams because our only other option before was 110 and that lens distortion was a little bit too much. So we had to calculate new values for the 120 yeah. and the, uh, the I don't see the 85 in there or is it the 95? There should I thought there was an 85. Maybe it is just the 90. Anyway, but the for the 51 and 63 owners, that preset's in there now. So you don't have to do the full calibration. Um so let's just say, for instance, we have a square. We'll make it a line. And if we go in here, um, I'll, I'll give you a for instance. Uh, let me just pull that file up. I think I have it. Maybe. I'm sure I have a file. No, let me download it again. Um, what it boils down to is your that test file can't be changed. The The bottom number needs to be a one and the and the max power needs to be a hundred because each one of those circles or squares or whatever is on that file is a different percentage of whatever that range is. So if you were to say, for instance, make your min and max power 100, then every single one of those will come out at hundred percent power and not 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, like it's supposed to. So it, you have to ignore the five and 10 mil, uh, millimeter per second ones. If you're having to use those kinds of speeds, you want to manually dial it in and get your cuts right when you get down to that point. This is just to give you a, you know, kind of throw a, a wide net, you know, over a bunch of different materials and kind of get an idea to get you in the ballpark um, okay. as far as the cutting goes. On the engraving, it gives you a pretty reliable, you know, but when you get down to those speeds, if you're cutting something that thing, you said it was whiteboard. It's that high density yeah. fiber board with that white coating on it or whatever. That's from Bose. Yeah. Well, I did your power scale and it's like a it's like five millimeters. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in the 15 range of the 15 speed, it cut it out at 70, 80, and 90. And then on the 20 uh 20 millimeters, it cut it out at 80 and 90. Right. And that was that's all it cut out. Nothing else was cut out, just those okay. five. Well, yeah, and part of that, I mean, so just use one of those settings that looks the best. Yes. Yeah, 
Uh, but the reason it's misbehaving is because the power scale feature in Lightburn using the min and max power differential fights with the controller's hardwired rules about motion planning. Well, what's a good rule of thumb when you do your uh, max and minimum uh, power? Is there a rule it, just stay the, the same? Or? The reason that's there is uh, let's say you're cutting out squares and the corners are getting rounded off and burnt. The reason right. is, is because the laser's having to slow down. If you set your minimum and maximum power the same, that's the general rule. That's the rule of thumb. Whatever right. your max power is, make your minimum power the same, unless you're using power scale or grayscale, which is what those what those test files use. Um, but it, what you can do is minimize it so that you don't blow out the corners. You know, if it if you're cutting out something delicate and it's rounding off all your sharp edges that usually means it's because it's you know burning it too hot because it has to go slower so what it'll do is as it goes 10 millimeters per second or slower it'll ramp down to that minimum power typically you want to start you know five percent ten percent lower than what the max power is but you only really change that uh different from max if you experience an issue okay. so normally leave them both at whatever the max is make the minimum the same okay um, yeah, I could show you that, but um, actually Robert Kofed has a video on it, um, I think, on his Computer Creations YouTube channel. Right, uh, and he, he, yeah, and and he goes over that too, I think. I didn't watch the whole thing, but um, but that's why it's happening. But, you know, um, if you're cutting, you know, at 70% or 80% power, there's no real – I mean, you can run it at 100%. I mean, it's safe to. What I mean is – the the power supply won't output more than what the current rating is on the tube when you're at 100% because they're calibrated. But th that's like anything else, whether it's a lawnmower or a car or whatever it is, the harder you run it, you, you know what I'm saying. Yes. You don't have to put the pedal to the metal. There's a diminishing point of return there also. Once you get, you know, 70, 80%, it'll be a little hotter, but it might not be that much hotter, you know, to make it burn your tube up a little a little faster. Uh, I usually stick around 90%. So what I would do if I was going to cut that stuff is I'd get one of those ranges where you're at 90% or 80% where it looks like it cut good and try that. And then you can dial it in a millimeter or two on your speed back and forth until you get your output that you desire. There's always some fine tuning. There's no easy button. Okay. So awesome. I like coming right out of the gate with a question. <laughs> so so I'll how's everybody? Do you have any more now? No, you I'll have this? more. Believe me, I've been cutting this week. It's fun. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's neat, isn't it? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Been doing a lot of sports files. Okay. Man. All right. All right. Be, be careful so. with that. If you're doing a lot of sports files, I hope you bought a license. Oh, no. This is the designs I bought off Etsy. There's, it's not a... It's not a name. It's just baseball, football, basketball, hockey, hockey, mm -hmm. soccer, whatever. It doesn't have any images on it. Like, is it logos? Gotcha. It's, uh, it's not branded. No. No. Oh, no. Okay. As no, long as it's not, not branded, just be careful with branded stuff. <laughs> oh, I don't do uh, that stuff. NFL and Disney are the worst. They'll they'll pop yes. you for twenty six grand, even if you tell them, you know, you just lost your job and you're sleeping in your car. They don't care. <laughs> yeah, you could you could you could sell you could sell one item. They don't care. They're gonna get you for a couple hundred thousand dollars. I'm sure. It's nuts. So, which I mean, you know, they got That's what branding's all about. That's their intellectual property. No different than yeah. if somebody else made a file and you know somebody borrowed it. So, or a rotary. Or or <clears throat> whatever. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, I'm. <clears throat> I'll be happy to get those metal ones and then I'll work up that stuff that we were talking about since we're talking about rotaries for a minute. Yeah, and, I showed uh, you the, the IPB drawing that I did. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that'll be good. We're going to, we're going to spice up the documentation. Uh, since we're coming out with that all metal rotary, we're going to revamp all the documentation and stuff on it and have some better drawings and uh, labels and videos and things like that. So uh, just to keep, you know, since we're making it all better, we make it better all the way around. So, right. And also, I mean, uh, I remember seeing somewhere, you know, uh, Jason's posting some of the stuff too. It's talking about lifetime warranty. What's the lifetime warranty uh, on it? I mean, is it all part? Lifetime, I mean, the lifetime warranty is is 
it's it's handled well for the first couple of years i think it'll be handled through myself and thunder obviously basically via me <laughs> um but what that covers is basically any anything that breaks cracks bends you know under normal use i mean if you throw it across the room yeah you can't yeah you can't abuse it i, I mean, mean <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. i get that yeah, so, the, so that's for the rotary itself. The motor, the, the motor has a one-year warranty, um, which is on on me because the manufacturer doesn't really give one. But I wanted to give some kind of um, warranty for the motor. Um, but the rotary itself is lifetime for the for the the person that bought it. So like you can't sell it three different times and then someone else comes to me <laughs> and and wants and wants repairs on it or something. Um, that's called the perpetual rotary. You ought to sell one. What's that? A perpetual rotary with well, with, with extended license. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Pass it on. <laughs> but you know, honestly, that lifetime warranty. You know, it, um, I don't think we've. I don't know that I've ever had a ticket submitted to ever use it. I mean, we've had a part here and there that break. I mean, but you know how we roll anyway. You know, if you need a part, we're going to put that thing out there. We don't really. Yeah. You know, we yeah, worry about the, that later. Metal, but. the metal stuff, all warranty stuff, will go through me, um, okay. just because I don't, I don't want to tie up a bunch of stuff, giving it to to Brian to issue out for warranties and may never need it. I'd rather yeah. just he'll send me a, he'll send me the address, the name and address of somebody. But with the metal, I mean, this stuff's all billet aluminum, sixty sixty one billet aluminum. I mean, yeah. and, and aluminum extrusion. So if you if you damage it, you had to have done something to it. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> It's not very easily broken. Even if Jason's lifetime warranty is actually just Jason's lifetime, uh, I don't think <laughs> I don't think you'll ever have to use it. <laughs> well, hopefully my lifetime doesn't doesn't get cut short. Shoot, right. the way so things yeah, are going. Right. Yeah, uh, just curious too. Uh, how often do the the motors go out on them? How much is a new motor? I've, I've never. never had a motor go out. Um, okay. And the motors with the cable together. <sighs> I think it's somewhere around 150 bucks. Yeah, and it's the same um, motors. It's the hybrid. It's the closed loop uh, stepper well, actually, with the with the. Uh, it's it's integrated. integrated. Yeah, well, they're it's also got the encoders in it. But, yeah, the yeah. driver's integrated in it too, instead of separate. Um, yeah. But that's the same motors, the same motor, you know, configuration that runs the X and Y axis, except that same, the driver's same, integrated. Same motor, just the driver's not attached. Right. 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 Yeah. Yep, yeah, because so. I mean, I'm about. To, I mean, I'm having to get a rotor. I mean, I got, I got my uh, 63 in. Uh, that was an adventure. I mean, uh, well, the thing about it is, I mean, it's a 63, and you and you bring it on the truck, having it long ways instead of you know sideways. Yeah. So there's no way in hell I can get it off. First off, <laughs> so I ended up, ha I ended up having to rent a trailer with a uh, uh, a gate on it, whatever that comes down or whatever, and and. Uh, I mean, they told me I could have got a tow truck to do it or whatever, but I'd really go get it myself so that I can, you know, check it out and do it a little bit easier. And um, got it off, got it created. Matter of fact, uh, electrical, ran the electrical. I just got to uh, tie in the, the breaker into the breaker box, and that's done. And uh, like one of the one of the legs or whatever, one of the black things, uh, it came loose or whatever, but I'm, I'm figuring as long as the, the metal still goes to the floor, it doesn't really matter. It's, well, it's just... no, send, send us an email to support at thunderlaserusa.com. That's mm -hmm. actually common. I got a whole box of those things and I'll send you okay. whatever you need to replace them. Uh, that's part of it. That's actually one of the own main components that holds that laser still inside that crate. You'll notice that they, you know, tack around it with some nails, you know, and that's what right. stabilizes the laser. So sometimes they get messed up. Okay. Um, they also walk down in transit. So, and then people move them up about three turns instead of putting them all the way to the top. And then they walk down as they're coming off the crate and, uh, knock the bottoms off. But we've got boxes of those. We don't squabble over that. If you need feet, we'll give you feet. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I still haven't got it all the way there yet. I mean, I'm taking my time with it, you know, yeah, uh, check all four of them. And if any of them are cracked, just let me know whenever, yeah, you know, what, just what, that what, email. What was, so. Like the like uh, the nut wasn't one to turn or whatever, but then it's like uh, the whole uh, the round black foot of it actually came off. You know, so yeah. it goes up. It's not mm -hmm. you know attached to the bolt on the bottom that, that, like the other ones you. or whatever. Yeah, we can we can but, fix you up. But I think that's the only thing that I really saw on that. Yeah. Cool. There's the new ones right there. That's, What's that? Oh yeah, the rotor bosses. 
Yeah, hold on. They're pretty. I can't wait. Yeah, because I'm even thinking about, you know, I, I want the Roto Boss and I'm wanting to get the uh, the extended uh, bars with it too. To um, That way I got the room for it. I got the 63. Might as well, you know, get the bigger and then anything smaller. You yeah, know, they are too. Yeah. I'm trying to do it to where, you know, you can't miss me too much. You know, I got everything yeah. kind of prepared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this yeah, the, looks sweet, man. The extension on the. Well, the extension's about 19 inches, um, which will give you an extra about 16 inches of engravable or of, of extended space, of the extra extended space. Um, so when you you got it now, it's a 21-inch machine. You have about 8 and 17 inches, and then you add another... 16, 17 to 32, so you got about 32 inches. So if you want to do baseball bats or broom handles or <laughs> whatever you might want to do, you'll have you have plenty of room for balance. Right, and everything right. You see, I, I was looking at. I mean, even though I'm not really saying that I'm going to go into that market or whatever, but you know, I mean, I'm looking at you can put like small urns in there and do it all the way around or or whatever. You know, depending on how wide they are. Yeah, you can do urns with this as it is, just stock. Um, the Roto Boss now, not the Junior won't do them. Um, I mean, it will, but you'd have to really kind of finagle stuff around. <clears throat> um, but the Roto Boss, since it adjusts on both ends, um, you don't have to worry about not being able to adjust for it and, and fit it on there. Cool. I'm taking notes as we go along now so I can add them to the description so I don't have to go back later and watch it. <laughs> I should have been doing that all along. So, yeah, if anybody has any questions, uh, like I say, feel free to kick on your mic and jump in and uh, we'll do also, what we can. Also, with the uh, like the external air, you know, when you get your because uh, I'm going to buy a compressor, mm -hmm. uh, you just hook it up the same way that you would hook up uh, the other little compressor and just keep the PSI low. Right. You need a secondary regulator close to the machine. Right. We've got a right. dot. Yeah. I can link that document in there if you want. Um, there's a, there's a external uh, air assist guidelines for external but, compressors. Because I feel like if you have the more air or whatever, you know, it also keep the fire. I mean, like what you do, like an acrylic or something to keep the fire down a little bit or, or anything yeah, like acrylic, that. Or, you don't wanna, acrylic, you want to, you want, you want, you want, you want, you want, you want low, you want low air, but I mean, you just got to right. kind of stay on top of it. Yeah. You'll notice a, a pretty significant improvement in cutting, you know, especially thicker stuff. So right. absolutely. Uh, let me see if I can find that. I got to pull open a browser window. And also, they still, they still have a long wait, wait on the uh, four-inch heads, or? Um, I didn't think there was a wait on four-inch okay. heads. Okay. So, somebody had said something. I thought somebody did. But I, just um, I, I'm, I think we keep those. The HR heads are have been on back order a little bit. One right. of the uh, founders passed away, so they had some right. yeah, I remember that. to jump through. Uh, but they're back in production. They got some samples back, and the samples look good, so they've got the first run uh, hopefully headed here quickly. And we should be able to fulfill all the back orders and still have plenty on the shelf. So at least that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, because um, I'm thinking about on the reimbursement part for the stuff to get the get it here or whatever, just add a little extra to it and get the four inch head. So everybody's right. happy. So there's the compressor guidelines and the maximum PSI is 55, but you want a secondary regulator. Uh, number one, so that you can crank your main one, you know, up to 80 or 90 or 100 or whatever you want to let it run at. So it doesn't have to cycle so much. And then you drop this one to 55. And then you also, the main thing is to, for moisture. You don't want any moisture getting on that lens. It's permeable and it's not glass. Um, and just a little bit will steam that thing up and it'll be gone in an instant. It'll burn it up. So that's one of the major reasons for having that. But that's literally how it connects. That's all there is to it. And this, well, actually, this is a little more descriptive. It shows you everything you need, how much, how many, everything. So you can just get on Amazon and find that stuff. And I've got links to a lot of it. Uh, there's some more documentation. There's a link to a regulator. There's a link to a kit that has a bunch of fittings in it. And there's some notes in here um, that you need to pay attention to that, you know, because there's only, there's not enough fittings. You have to get some additional ones. 
Um, but yeah, I'll put that link for that in the chat. Yeah, um, Aubrey just confirmed we are not back ordered on the four inch heads. So it's only okay. the HR head that we had gotten a little slow. Right. Yeah, but I remember we, that the HR was on there, but I thought somebody at one point yeah. in one of the groups said something about a four inch. So I figured right. I'd ask. Yeah, we're we're good there. So all right. Anybody else got anything? I'm multitasking over here. I do have a question about technique today. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if it's possible to achieve sandblasted look on uh, like a, a porcelain tile or um, a ceramic tile um, where you don't get a bunch of glass slag from the, uh, the heat of the laser. Uh, on some of those materials, possibly. Uh, I know glass is out because, you know, it, it, that's actually uh, – uh, expanding the water molecules in there and causing micro fractures. Um, right. it, it, but it, you know, we can ablate tile and, and slate and granite and things like that. And that's those ceramics. Some of the ceramics fall more along those things. I haven't tried it. Uh, but I would imagine that you could actually get some depth, uh, in, in some of those materials. Well, I am getting some depth. Um, I'm running my one thirty. Um, just getting a lot of, um, you know, glass beads around the edges that I I've got see. to knock off later, right? And so I'm running it, I'm just running at 20 speed. It's very slow, but I'm running at 80 power on my 130. And I'm getting the depth I think I'd like, but it, it, it just um, uh, it glasses up like crazy. Now, is this well, a, an engrave? Are you cutting, trying to cut it? Uh, it's an engrave. Okay, because you're 20 millimeters per second? Yeah. Oh yeah, you wow. need to be like in the hundreds of millimeters per second for raster engraving. And if you can't make it through, you just, you just make a couple of passes. Um, something like 400 millimeters per second, maybe 80% power, uh, 0.08 line interval. Um, well, glass, okay. Glass, I've, been, I've been down around 250 with, well, with a 150 watt laser, I usually do about 250 at anywhere from 80 to 85%. But you got to do several, yeah. Wow. To get, to get a good bit of depth, but the problem with that is, is if you, if depending on the size or the 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 density of the engraving, you got to watch out for it because I mean obviously it'll shatter the glass if it gets too hot. Oh. Um, so, so what really about just, lines per? That, that's terrible. That's what? terrible. Glass is not meant to be ablated. It's not even supposed to do it. It's just <laughs> supposed to frost it. Well, it, that's it that's terrible. <laughs> uh, another thing you might try, uh, Thon, I don't remember his last name, but he's in the group here sometimes too. But uh, he was showing some, it's like an orange tape. It's, it comes in a roll uh, that I think he got it from JDS or yeah. one of the places like that, that uh, he showed, a, uh, he's got a video somewhere that uh, where he shows using that. And it, it, it makes it to where like those, maybe those edges that you're getting might not be there because when you peel it off. Uh, yeah, it's, it's well, a lot more. It's a lot more clear. And uh, it, the it problem, doesn't... what they're doing is they're stopping the the heat. They're they're trying to fix the spalling that happens. But the problem is, if you go over glass the way you should, there should be minimal spalling. You should be able uh -huh. to take steel wool and just barely go over it, and and it's <clears throat> good after now, that. He, People use that tape and dish soap. Yeah, he's not on glass either. He's using ceramics. Oh, okay. Yeah, ceramics. I don't. I'm... I haven't got too yeah. much luck with those. Usually, the deeper I try to go, the it turns it black. Yeah, see, yeah, we're kind of talking color. about two different things, because yeah, glass, you about, glass, uh, you, you can, you can, you can put some depth in glass, but also, well, you, you can, but golly, I've never tried it. I like said it's not very smart, but it could be done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you talked about <laughs> density of the image. What about lines per inch? Uh, lines it, per inch, I still keep. the I don't know, anywhere from point, point zero five to point zero eight. It depends on what you're doing, really. If it's just block okay. lettering, you block lettering, and depending on your speed and everything. Um, and obviously, if if you have a like a difference between a high high resolution head, a, a two inch, four inch, 
things like that come into play because the curve of the beam is also going to affect what you want for lines per inch to get a good image. So there's a lot that comes into play when you're when you're doing that. But my my rule of thumb is 0 0.06. <laughs> if, if I got to do something and I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, I usually use 0 0.06, and then it's okay. usually it's a pretty safe bet, um, especially with the two inch lens. Um, if you if you got everything set up set up right, then then you shouldn't have any issues. And let's see what if, let's see if the materials library uh, lends any but information the, on that. So we were talking about, you were talking about ceramics and stuff. I've I've tried that, but like I said, the deeper you go, it's like the more power you need, and the more power you need, obviously it can burn it. And I've see, had a lot of I've just had. Try. I just do a surface. Basically, get rid of any kind of coating that's on it, and I'm done. Yeah. I don't try to yeah. go deep on them because, like I said, yeah. it always turns brown. Uh, all of the recommendations for the 130 watt for things like glass and granite and marble and ceramics are about 500 millimeters per second and about 25 percent power. Hmm. So, um, and I'll put a link uh, to the, the 130 watt material library. Uh, in that chat for you. I think I will. Yeah, everyone. There we go. Um, but yeah, you need to, you probably, if you're trying to get depth, you, you're going to want to probably do multiple passes. Uh, otherwise, you're going to cook that stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like wood. If you just go hogging, hogging material out of wood, it's going to be darker than if you do several passes at a a lower, lower uh, power. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're dwelling on that ceramic so long you are actually glazing it again, heat melting yeah. it again. So um, multiple passes if it's required to get to your depth. What kind of depth are you looking for? Are are you wanting to paint fill it or? Um... Well, enough to paint fill, but in this specific case, no paint, just depth. Okay. Now, so my, I could recommend that if you're trying to go for depth, do a do a few short passes. Like two or three passes at a lower lower uh, power to get almost like um, using a hacksaw. You kind of do a couple strokes, short strokes to get a groove going, and then you just hog away at it. So that way, in theory, if you get that outline done without any any fractures or anything on the edges, then you might be able to actually start taking a lot more material away quicker. That that makes sense. Yes. It sounds good in my head. <laughs> but uh <laughs> but no, just like start it, get get the edges nice and clean, and then once you get a good a good um a cut going, then then start trying to 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 take away the the bulk material. Cuz that that way once the edges are already already defined, it shouldn't affect it as you go deeper. Okay, good deal. Does that that, that kind of makes sense? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done it that way. I'm just thinking, and that's kind of my 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 thought on that to maybe help help prevent that. Yeah, there's right, a, well, I'll get it perfected. Have you seen the uh, test files and and the links and stuff like that for that kind of thing? Um, let me go to the. Material test. Let's see. So here's a test file, and that's the one that um, that right. we were talking about at the beginning of the session. But if you go to this website here, and I'll link it, and I think we might have done that before. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Um, it has Is it a on basic materials, or well, you set it up. It's a generator, so you go in and fill out some information, and it generates the file for you uh, in a library oh, yeah. format. So, but the the ones that are interesting, for instance, are the engrave interval. You can check your line interval and see if your uh, settings are right according to how you have it focused or what lens you're using. If it's too far apart, you'll have horizontal striations in between it. And this is usually what people go for. They say, oh, I'm going to tighten up my line interval to make my engravings darker. But all you're doing is just going over it, you know, m in more than one place. Um, and if you're trying to lay down dots and do a photo, for instance, like if you were dithering or something and you did this, you would blow away all your detail. So mm -hmm. line interval is really important and it depends on your focus or it plays 
uh, it's it's got a deep relationship with focus. So um, there's a variety of things, and there's some instructions, you know, uh, kind of on what to use these for. But there's some really neat tools in here. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's me today. <laughs> And you may check on some of the Facebook groups. Uh, the global group seems to be fairly responsive most of the time. Some some other people may have already done a similar uh, substrate. Well, I did some I did world. some digging around and didn't find a whole lot of info. Okay, yeah, that that's so. going to be your probably your biggest factor is not a lot of people have tried to do what you're doing, so you'll have to pioneer the effort. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So. I'll let you know how it turns out. Absolutely, I'd like to know. I, that would be that'd be cool. Um, and and just a random note, I found a paint that I think pretty much matches uh, the white part of the laser after a lot of searching around, and you can get it on Amazon. And I'll put a, a I'm, I'm actually going to write an article about it on little bits and pieces, you know, that people need for the laser because people won't touch up paint from time to time, and uh, it's not perfect. Uh, I wouldn't win a show, but it matches pretty good, so it's kind of hard to see if you're not really looking. So if anybody needs any paint, we can hook you up. So, um, anybody else got anything? Yeah, I had to start sending small bottles of touch-up paint and the well, toolkits. Yeah. Well, it's not called for a lot, and that adds up when you're moving – thousands of machines oh. <laughs> so i had even thought one time about adding a, a digital meter you know and they're like are you crazy i was like yeah that is kind of ridiculous even if they're only 10 bucks a piece i mean that that's got to be absorbed somewhere so we just said i have been known to send people a, a meter if they don't have one so and instructions if they don't know how to use it so if we if you need paint we'll make sure that you got paint we have i think i've had two two calls for it and it's taken me six months to figure out what to get <laughs> so well you know you could probably take a panel off and take it to home depot and get them to match it yeah yeah i probably could do that i haven't been able to leave my place in two years though i've been stuck to this computer on the support desk so i don't get out much i have everything come to me food amazon everything nice. um <laughs> And this is a lacquer. It's lacquer, and it the sheen even matches, you know. So well, they, they can match on spray paint now too, and get you custom spray paint. Okay, sweet. I may check that out because it is kind of an off white. It's not a it's not a bright white. I've got a densitometer somewhere. I could do it that way and just find a Pantone color for it. But I don't know if I'd get the uh, the finish right. Yeah, it's because I was laughing because, like I said, I just got that in, and for some reason, like the chiller. It had like a uh, decent sized scratch on the top of it or whatever. And my wife's like, did, it's still wrapped. How did you get that? You know, I said, man, it's just a scratch, man. I'm not worried about that, man, as long as it works. Yeah. We we have had a machine or something dropped on a machine. Uh, actually, this has probably happened about twice and caved the whole top of it in. And uh, people have taken the lid off and warped it back and, you know, put baling wire, whatever they need to do and got that door working again and we're actually using it while they're waiting on the replacement parts so so that some of the transit damage uh most of it's cosmetic most of it's not very significant every once in a while you get a good one <laughs> so if you want to send in a, a picture of that scratch we'll have a look at it too and at least let them know so we can run it up the flagpole and they can let qc know because that's something they like too they like that feedback because we monitor you know uh failure rates and report incidents uh so that we can make sure everything's going as it should right i don't think it's really that big of a deal i mean it possibly could have been my three-year-old too i mean it didn't look like it but you never know yeah yeah but like i said feel free to shoot that to us we, we evaluate anything and everything yeah, they were real helpful with everything. Like I said, you know, matter of fact, I, it was supposed to be here last Friday. And then uh, I called them and said, hey, you know, and then they're like, okay, yeah, it was delayed in San Antonio or whatever. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, well, I need, you know, I'll reschedule for Tuesday or whatever. I said, well, you know, I'd like to get it as soon as possible. And they're like, okay, I'll, I'll do it for Monday. I'm like, okay. So then I've been watching the, you know, the uh, tracking and everything. And then it was showing Tuesday. So I, I called them Monday morning. 
or actually mm-hmm. I looked on looked on it and was saying it was already out for delivery. I'm like, okay, well, y'all need to make up your mind. So, but the guy, he even said, he said, man, I told my dispatcher that I can't deliver this like this, you know, but I have to come out. Yeah. And uh, he said, unless you have a forklift with deep forks, you're not going to get it out. He said, I can't even move it with a pallet jack. So that's when uh, I'd called and tried to talk to Rebecca, but she's not there. Any- I mean, not Rebecca, uh, Cheyenne, but she wasn't, she's not there anymore. And uh, they directed me to uh, Rebecca and everything. She took mm-hmm. care of me. Now I just got to send her the, um, the receipts and stuff. I went ahead and did it with the, tra- I mean, to me, it was cheaper to do it that way, even though it's not coming out of my pocket. It was still cheaper. To, and I always, you know, I look at it, man, it's easier for me to go do it like that. And everything's cheaper than going to rent a, a flatbed and have them tow it to your house. They're going to charge your arm and leg for, to tow it, you know? Yeah. But, but they, with, you know, support and everything's been great. Sweet. Sweet. So. All right. I don't really have anything else. I don't think. Um, Okay, so like also like since it's you know there's nothing really on that like when I hook up the exhaust, so basically you're wanting the exhaust uh, since like if I get the uh, what is the S8 or whatever, are you you're wanting that further down the line so it sucks it out or do you want it closer and it's pushing? So you want closer. you want negative you're pressure much. in in the system. So you want all of this to be negatively pressured as close as you can get the fan to the outlet as humanly possible. Okay. Uh, because if you're blowing it through the lines, it's not as efficient. And if there's a leak or a crack or a hole, it's going to for sure force that stuff out those holes. If gotcha. most of the system is negatively pressured and it's under vacuum and it's being pulled through, it's a lot more efficient. And if you get a hole or a crack, all it's going to do is suck in a little fresh air. It won't eject all that stuff out into your workspace. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hook up the uh, the one that came with it, but I'm going to end up ordering the other. Sure. Uh, then I have more of a setup probably like that after yeah. I move, hopefully, in and, about six and, months. Yeah, and, and unless you've got a Nova 24 or a Mini 60 or maybe an Odin or an Aurora, if it's a Nova 35 through 63, it comes with that green loud fan. And they're plenty capable, but most people f- swap them out just simply for the noise. So that fan will do you a fine job. And right. people have been known to mount those outside. I mean, they use those in grain silos to evacuate all the particulates up there so there won't be a fuel air explosion uh, to keep those vented and stuff. So, I mean, they, you know, people have been known to mount them. Actually, I think Clay does uh, or did mount those on the outside of the – just had them sitting outside on a little concrete pad out in the weather. <laughs> he didn't put a box around them. So they lasted, I don't know, seven, eight years. So Okay. That's another option is and, and if you look at some of the documentation from a lot of the laser companies uh, and it's epilogue and ULS, the best practice is to have the fan on the outside of the work area, not not on the inside of it. So they recommend mounting the fan on the exterior so that you have a right. completely negative system until it's outside. But so yeah, I, that's I'm impractical a, for most yeah. people. For now, I mean, it's in my garage. You know, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna run it out the bottom of the garage. Yeah, throw it out the door, man. Yeah, <laughs> because see, th- yeah, because see, the thing about it is, we're in a rent house, so I didn't want to just go start poking a bunch of holes and all kinds of other stuff, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of people that do that. You can even just slide you a two by twelve or something across there, you know, and lower the door down on it, and that way, keep the if it's cold or something, you can block that section off even. Right. That's what I plan on doing. Yeah. So, absolutely. And I was trying to think. I keep thinking there was something else. Um, I think it was just that, that thing about the presets. I think I need to go in and change the article and show that they're in the newest version. So, it's a lot easier to choose a preset than the other one. Um, I'll make myself a note before I forget. Anybody else got any questions or comments about anything? So they added the presets for the bigger camera, not the smaller ones, like for the 35. Yeah, the um, whatever ones it was it an 85 or 95? It's in there now. Let's see. I'll pop it back up here. So yeah, the current ones are the 85 and the 120. And was the 85 in that list? And see, here's what we'd been doing. We've been it. having to go in here and download this camera profile that had the 85 or the 120 presets in it and then do the alignment on top of this. 
Um, but since they're in Lightburn now, I don't think we have to worry about that. Let's see. So with the new presets and everything, does that mean it covers more of the bed and everything now? Or? No, no, that, no, the lens presets are for the lens calibration because each of them have some distortion because of the fisheye, and it's to keep the the it's to keep the scale correct. Um, it's to remove distortion in the lens, and you only, oh, okay. only should have to do it once. Um, so we go to calibrate the camera lens. I'll pick the camera, and yeah, 85 is not in there yet. So, but 120 is. Oh wait, yeah. that's the five megapixel 120. I'm sorry, they are not in there. Yeah, credit at the bottom. Eight megapixels, 120. That's a narrow, not a wide. Oh, it is a narrow. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I need to forget everything I said about the cameras today. The presets aren't in there yet. Um, you need to go for the 120s and get the correction value for that. And I need to let this guy know that in the ticket because I just told him something incorrectly. So somebody ask a question for a second while I go into my ticket. I got a roll, guys. You guys, you guys take it easy. See you next week. All right, man. Take care. See. Yeah, I've never been able to get my camera exactly spot on, and I'm not going to do the dot test. <laughs> yeah. Let's... I got enough headaches. Oh, crap. I'll fix that in a minute. Do you want the uh, link to the to the calibration? So you, don't you have the – yeah, don't you have the uh, 120 camera? No, I got the 3580, so that's whatever the – Oh, you got the the eighty five or the well, yeah, it was the I don't know eighty five. I don't know which one I ended up with. So these well, they've had it since what June, July. So it's probably the eighty five. It it might be. We can identify it. We can run through. Are you still? We can run through calibration if you want to. If you want to do a remote session. Yeah, I never had it. I just huh? it's it's close. I'm within I'm within like two millimeters, three millimeters. Oh, that's not close. And so I get it close, and I'm like, okay, then I just move it. <laughs> oh man! And, I, no, and I just sort of, and I've sort of just given up on it because I was just like, I'm trying to do too much other stuff. No, no, no! Don't give up on it, man. Put I'm in a support geek. ticket, and we'll we'll do a remote session and have a look at it. I've just not bothered to geek out on it. So, well, I'll geek out with you. You don't have to do it alone. <laughs> just let me know if you want to. Yeah, I will. Because I want to, I want to get. I don't want you. I want your equipment to work like it should, and you should have half a millimeter accuracy or something like that. I was close at one time, and then all of a sudden it jumped out on me, and I don't know why. I checked everything was tight, and I went and redid it, and I got it close enough, and I was like, good enough. Some of us probably my eyesight because I can't. I need new glasses. <laughs> I've run out of bifocals. All right. Now, I just sent a message to the Lightburn guys because I asked them. I, I thought the presets were in there, and I said, hey, they're not in the change log that you put the presets in there. I just wanted to confirm, and they hadn't answered yet. They're probably thinking I'm an idiot. So I just messaged them back and told them to never mind that I'm an idiot. So <laughs> I'll remove all doubt. This is a pretty mellow one today. Yeah, this, it is. I was just trying to even come up with something. What are you running your 3580 at for cutting like oak and stuff? I don't know. I have a says he doesn't use it enough to really keep all that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the last thing I cut was some like nine ply birch or something like that. That was a little over half inch thick. The last time I cut oak, I mean, I could probably find it. I don't ever write my settings down. I mean, sometimes I'll update it in the library, but I can't guarantee that they'll be right um because usually if i'm cutting something it's because somebody says hey what speed and power do you need to cut through blah 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 and if i have any i'll go try it so i don't ever really keep any of that information in my head <laughs> i was just curious i just did it the other day and i forget what it's like you i didn't write it down i forget what my settings were at yeah I, it was slow you know it was it was five millimeters per second or below are you talking about like half inch thick stuff just natural three quarter three quarter three, oak oh yeah Oh, that that may be two passes on that. What I've seen one. sometimes, it, did you? I think, did it? I think it, I was how at the bottom look? Was there what what lens did you use? 
The two inch, I think. I can't remember now. Actually, it's sitting right behind me. I forgot it was sitting behind me. I just kept playing with it. There's the. Okay. That's the bottom. What happens if you put the piece in backwards? Does it is it is there a is there a bad taper? No oh, crap. Which one was which? <laughs> Shouldn't they be the I, same? <laughs> well, I can't remember. One was I think the two inch lens, and one was a four inch lens. Oh, I got I you. Don't remember because I think the curve's bigger. See, you just made a puzzle. There, you can see there's a gap in there. Okay. They're in upside down, I think. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. They may be, but okay. But it did it. I was just curious what you ran yours at. Yeah. And it didn't it, chart horribly bad. I mean, oak charts anyways. Oh, it does. But yeah, that's not oak, terrible. No, oak burns anyways, no matter what you do with it, even trying to do wood, any type of woodworking. You slow down on your table saw too much and it'll it'll burn the edge really bad anyways. Mm -hmm. Same as cherry. Cherry is, I think, even more delicate and even worse with it. Yeah. The stuff I cut for cherry is like quarter inch, three eighths max, you know, usually around quarter inch. I love that. Most, a, a lot of the woods that I, natural woods that I cut are that, the purple heart and all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's not as much green in it. Yeah, but like on the table saw, if you're running cherry and you remotely slow down, you can tell where you slowed down because they'll leave the burn mark of the blade on it. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine if you slowed down too much on a laser, exactly what it would do really bad. Yeah. We've got some cherry around here. I want to try. I just haven't had time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and some of that would uh, like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, it's not the serious. Uh, yeah. I'm just curious. Cause like I went ahead and went, like I said, I bought the 63 100 because of, you know, financial wise or whatever. Didn't really want to, didn't have the extra funds to go with the 130 or whatever. And uh, I was thinking that, I would buy a 35 and, and, and get the, the uh, and then swap over to a 130 or whatever on the 63. But then again, you know, if you got the 100 watt bulb or the whatever on, on that, you know, you got the big, you know, uh, box coming out the side. So most likely I might just bite the bullet and go with the 51 and have the 51 and the 63. But what I'm figuring that I might do is buy the, uh, the 51 at a, for a 130 and then swap out the stuff over to the 63 and then swap the, the hundred watt. I mean, that I figured that'd be uh, probably the best way to do that. Correct. Like change, like, cause they're both compatible as long as you have the right power supply or the right chiller and the right uh, tube. Correct. I think that's what we said before. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, later on down the line, it could be uh, an issue is if we don't get it documented, thoroughly you know if you ever call for support and we look you up by serial number and send you the wrong tube or something like that you know what i mean right so flip-flopping parts and stuff is not generally a good idea honestly right but um i mean you can you can do whatever you want to them you know as long as you don't blow them up <laughs> right <laughs> well, up. Thing about it is, i so, mean i'd rather have the 63 for the uh, the 130 watt because of the size of the bed and multiple job production wise, you know, for yeah. cutting. Well, if you have two machines, you can spare an extra 10 seconds on cutting something out without having to swap your tube out. Just slow down because you got another machine you're running too. I mean, right. that, that's one way to look at it. If you had one, if you had one machine, then speed probably is more of a factor. I mean, because the speed difference between 100 and 130, I forgot what that sheet said. I don't even know if it's accurate. I mean, it's, it's noticeable, you know, in, in a, if you're running production, but if you got another machine that you're running at the same time, that kind of just, I don't know if I would go through all of that, honestly. Okay. But yeah. Cause I mean, I, I was thinking cause of thicker material type stuff too, or whatever. Well, see, the thing is, it's all about the time. My 80 watt will cut through three quarter, just like your 100 wheel or anybody's 130 wheel. I just have to do it a lot slower. Right. But the difference in speed between 100 and 130 is not nearly as much as it is from an 80 to a 130, for instance. Right, so, gotcha. you know, I, I I I don't know how much difference you would even notice. That might be good to put head to head sometime. If somebody had a hundred watt and hundred and thirty watt machine right next to each other, actually, right. real testing. Maybe one day we'll have a whole. Uh, maybe the lab will be full of every machine we have. Yeah, we'll I mean, do don't get me wrong. Stuff. This yeah. would be further down the line anyway. But you know, that's just my t thought process. I got the biggest yeah. I could afford, and then sure. you know. Yeah, and uh, uh, you could you could do that, sure. Uh, if it were me, I'd run that one until the tube was about to fail, 
you oh know, yeah run, of run course, it for a couple of, of years and then when you yeah. go to buy another tube just up up it then then you're only out a cup an extra couple hundred bucks for a little right. bit larger tube and a power supply you know right and then you're you're golden after that that would be the way i would attack it yeah but i mean would you have to uh change out the uh chiller also or or because uh um, you can run you can run that on the chiller i mean if you ran it seven hours a day you know, seven days a week, nonstop cutting stuff at 100% power. That chiller might have a little trouble keeping up, but I don't see why a 500 wouldn't or a 5000 series wouldn't wouldn't handle that. Right. As long as you you know run it at full duty cycle, you know. Right. But yeah, it's all down the line, man. That's just trying to trying to get a, a kind of a goal set plan. You know, hey, look, yeah. you know, it's just like right now the way I look at it. You know, I'm having to learn everything and. And, uh, hell, I'm happy to make like two grand between now and Christmas, even though I know that I can make more than that, but that's my goal, at least two grand or more. Sure. And then next year, hit them hard, you know, right. throughout the year when I'm slow, stuff that's generic, make your generic, uh, uh, ornaments and stuff, just have them stacked in a box, put them up. That way they're ready for Christmas time. You don't have to rush, you know, mm -hmm. do, your custom, do your custom orders and the stuff that you sell out of, you just go ahead and replenish a little bit. Yep. Like storing up your storing up your food for the winter. <laughs> exactly. Just a squirrel trying to get a nut. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. Well, does anybody else have anything? It's about ten minutes early, but it's been a little light today. If anybody has any last questions or anything, I may pop this thing off and go knock a few more things off my to-do list. I got on a roll this morning uh, on some stuff that I was behind on, so I'm a hopefully clear that list out today so i wanted to bring up and ask if anybody was running the Lightburn bridge besides me okay i am uh i've been running it for about three weeks and it's been flawless that's exactly my experience i have two running and uh I'm, uh, i just put the latest image on yesterday but they they seem to be running perfectly yeah yeah it's it's great and i, I don't have any macs i'm running it on windows um me too. You know, and that was yeah. primarily made for to address some com issues uh, with Mac OS, but uh, I think they're super fabulous even for PC. So, so you guys are starting right? including them? Um, I doubt that. At one time, we were even looking like you know wanting to see if China would maybe even mount cameras prior and all that. But honestly, people use so many different peripherals and different vendors and things like that, and we don't want to pigeonhole anything. So um we just let people choose what they want because uh, some people get different cameras than the ones that we recommend for instance even if they're not you know uh, or whatever but um so i don't think we'll we'll be doing that anytime soon uh as far as with the pie uh, how about offering but, it as an add-on with the sales team uh well lightburn will have them for sale before too long um yeah. on their site they've already got the thing it, whether we you know, if we do that image on our own, we couldn't really do that because that image is for personal use. So we wouldn't be able to distribute that as a, you know what I mean? We'd be in violation of Lightburn's agreement uh, for using that thing since we would be using that as more of a corporate tool instead of for private. Um, but I do have working on some, uh, well, they already have the documentation, but I already have an article linking on, on, so everybody can do it themselves. And that of course work, but I don't, are we going to put together kits for this? Nah, I, I'm not in the, I'm not in the auto parts business. Uh, you know, especially if the stuff's already out there and people can get them uh, from other sources. Um, cause that just takes away from my core competencies. So. Is that basically just to turn your laser into wi uh, Wi-Fi? Kind, kind of sort of um it, it does it does convert it to wi-fi and typically udp doesn't play well over wi-fi communication but the way this bridge is set up uh, you're still connected via ethernet so you're using tcp ip protocols um so it's rock solid and it eliminates all of the dongles and ethernet and usb connectivity issues that plague uh, especially the mac os uh, but windows has had its share along lines too Every time there's an update or a patch or a fix or a security or whatever, it used to screw things up. So uh, with the yeah. Mac thing, this bridge is a huge uh, advancement. And the, honestly, the reason he built that thing is because 
it's not something he can fix in Lightburn. You know, it's it's just a problem with how it plays with Mac. And he was getting so many calls about it. I think this is my take on it that he he designed this whole thing just so that he could offer it and hopefully take some of that load off. You know, because the problem was so prevalent. Yeah, it's odd because I had absolutely no problem setting up Wi-Fi. Yeah, I, I've run over Wi-Fi, and I had that old article, you know, about using one of those uh, Asus uh, kind of wizard, you know, three-piece device uh, network appliances. It, it can be a router or a repeater or a access point. Um, um, wait a minute. I'm not running. I'm running my lap. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking wrong because I was going to run Wi-Fi and end up just cabling it to my router. Uh, yeah. To my yeah. bridge. That UDP, my router. that Ruida does not like having its data transmitted over the Wi-Fi protocols. But um, I, I've done it, and I haven't had any trouble with it. So, yeah, because I just figured it was easier to run a cable across the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. All of my stuff that's critical, all the computers and stuff like that, are all hardwired. Then you know, all the other mobile devices and IoT and stuff, unless it's security cameras, they're they're all wireless. But everything is, critical is hardwired for me. Yeah, I just wish the camera was. Wi-Fi. Well, it will be. They're working on making the camera work with the bridge. So that's what I'm waiting for. So I don't have to run an extender <laughs> for my USB. So I've tried a wireless camera and there's a little bit of latency. It can be done, but um, they're working on making it where the light burn camera will plug into that uh, bridge and be transmitted along with the rest of it. The only thing I have not tried is trying to take the camera into my network because i do have the usb adapters to see if it, how bad it would actually be you talking about where it's to usb to ethernet and you use the ethernet cable between them to extend yeah. it those yeah. aren't network appliances if you apply them into your router you're liable yeah. to fry something no and i meant it, from going from i guess right i guess i couldn't go usb to cat could i mm -mm. not not with those things you'll burn something yeah, I'm thinking up. outside of the other box thinking outside the box so there's a there's a software solution for it that will uh turn a port you can use raspberry pi to convert a usb cam to a wi-fi cam and that's what they're going to patch in so um and then there's a software solution as well uh it turns it back into usb on the other side once you get the camera over a tcp ip protocol it'll bring it back to a usb a virtual usb port uh over on the other side i haven't found a good free solution for the software side of it though um, they're all paid solutions it's not been a big huge deal anyways because i usually have a laptop sitting right next to a laser so it's easier yeah to yeah that's bounce what back I and forth. it's a lot easier especially since you just boom shoot the file over and go you know it's a lot easier i, I like to work right next to it too yeah so. i bought one of those the uh, u.s general small mobile carts at harbor harbor freight's mm -hmm. got a drawer and so i turn it into my desk it sits right next to it yeah i've seen those that looks pretty handy so well, cool. Um, well, if nobody there. else has anything, I think I'm going to jump off here. Or I got you a couple more minutes. Huh? <laughs> I was just trying to dig for you a couple more minutes so you can make your hour. Oh, yeah. No, I'm good, man. I don't have to make my hour. I, I don't get punished, I don't think. I don't think there's a penalty. <laughs> yeah, but I just want to say, I mean, I appreciate everything. You know, I, I, like I said, I try to make it on here every week, even if it's just to listen or, sure. or put in my two cents or whatever. I got a long way to go. And, uh, you know, it's scary, but I'm going to get there. Oh, yeah. Drive it like you stole it, man. Oh, as soon as I figure it out a little bit, man, it's going to be like it's stolen hot, you know, and the cops <laughs> are on my on my butt, you know. <laughs> right. No, honestly, I've only had mine since June or July. And I watched all this stuff beforehand. It's not hard. Yeah, it's my, thing, my biggest thing is, like I said, you know, the, soft, learning the software, because I've never, I mean, I've dealt just very little years and years ago when I worked, the, or a company, when I worked in a sign company. They started getting me on the graphic thing of it, whatever, but they always pulled me out in the field, so I never really got to mess with it. So trying to learn all the features and, uh, you know, I'm figuring next couple of this month or whatever, I end up buying some files or trying to find people that, you know, that have to shoot some files over or whatever for ornaments, whatever, and uh, yeah. start start doing that and it, just to get started. And, and while I'm doing those, learn, learn the software and stuff, you know. Robert's so, got some decent stuff for Lightburn and also too on YouTube. And also if you go to Lightburn's YouTube channel, they've also got quite a few um, yeah. learning files. And here's, 
I'll put this in the chat. This is a um, link to a whole bunch of vector stuff. And then there's also ours. Let me see where that is. We have a file pack in here as well. Let me put this one there first. And I think that went out to everyone. And then there's a file pack. Complimentary Thunder file pack. It has a whole bunch of this stuff in it. And that's free. And these are licensed. Uh, the guy paid for the commercial license so that we could redistribute these. Yeah, so, that's some yeah, that's more right. intricate stuff. I've seen that. It file is. A lot of it's yeah. 3D stuff. It, it may not be exactly what you're looking for, but there, you know, between those links, that at least give you a starting point. So, right. I don't even know what that was. Well, cool, guys. Uh, I'm going to hit the Thanks, record I appreciate button. it. Sure.